All right, fuck it. I'm just gonna just tell you. I'm tired of having to keep my cool all the time. And people still fuck you over. So, I've been having car issues, okay? <clears throat> One car after another, after another. Now, I go take my car in, my GMC Acadia. And I go and I get it taken in. And I say, I need an oil change. My sister, sensors are broken. They need to be fixed. And my um, tire rotation, regular stuff. And so, I put that all in there. You know, confirmed it with the lady when I made the appointment. And then when I got there, I checked in or whatever. And I asked the gentleman. The name was Michael. And I asked him, I said, you know, how long is it going to take? He said, about two hours. I said, okay, to get all the stuff done, the sensors, blah, blah, blah. He was like, yeah. I said, okay. So I walked 25 minutes to the mall because I wanted to get my steps in. So I walked back. And I see that the prices aren't adding up or whatever. And I asked him, I said, okay, you know, and I also see here that it says I have an oil leak. Why didn't nobody call me and let me know that I had an oil leak? Is, you know, is that something I probably would have wanted to get fixed today if possible? And he was like, oh, well, I just kind of saw it now. And then when, you know, I asked him, I said, okay, well, did they at least, you know, fix the sensors? And he said, oh, well, no, because one of them needs to be replaced. And I said, Okay, so you fixed it, right? Because that's the reason why I brought my car in. Well, that's one of my main complaints. And he said, uh, no, we didn't fix it. Was that something that you would like to do? And I had to keep my cool because it's like, that's the reason why I made this appointment was for them to be fixed. And you're telling me that you didn't even give me a courtesy call to say that, hey, it's going to be a certain amount of money, you know? So I could have just said, yeah, go ahead and do it. But then I had to walk all the way back and it's not even complete. <laughs> okay, so initially I saw this clip and I wasn't going to use it. But then I saw a stitch and the man that did the stitch, I thought it was very interesting how he broke down what she was going through. Let's take a look at how we broke this down. Unfortunately, this emotional breakdown is what awaits many modern women. Uh -huh. This woman needed car work done. She took her car to the GMC dealer and had serious issues. It's not her that's supposed to be taking her car to the dealership. It's her husband that's supposed to be dealing with that. We are built and made to be your shield and deal with unruly people. That's our jobs. You guys have let people lie to you and tell you that you don't need a shield. And you spend all of your time trying to be a man and a woman. And this is the result. You break down. And she's not tired physically. Her soul, her heart is tired. We have to make our lives now and can in a much more complex pattern, but it, it, it can't always be happiness. So when I saw his clip, I thought he explained that precisely. And then on my For You page, I started getting videos of more independent women that were in despair. And it sort of went like this. Can I keep it all the way a buck with y'all for real? Is I haven't like I've been doing this shit this whole time. I want to like go into what it's really like having depression because I feel like there's an people tell you it's just like not being able to get out of bed and shit like that but it's so much more than that. there's like the aches and the pains and the ideation and sometimes the inability to cope with just like regular shit so for the life of me, I've never understood why people fake or pretend to have depression because it's incredibly debilitating. It's incredibly debilitating. Like, I hate the fact that I wake up most days and I hate the fact that I wake up most days. And I know that that's like the depression talking. I know it's an illness of stuckness. I know you're supposed to get up and move. But when you just like don't feel like living, what's the fucking point of doing deep breathing? 
like I sit in the space and hold the space for my clients, which I can't even do now. Because <laughs> I'm too fucking burnt out. <laughs> and we sit and process what it's like, but to actually experience this shit is way the fuck different. <laughs> it's way different. Like, you have gaps of time where that you, like, don't remember. Um, we could just stick with the ideation. I think that is the worst of it. That is the worst of it. It doesn't matter how you feel about yourself. It doesn't matter how much you love yourself. It doesn't matter any of that. When that depression wants to fucking kick in, it, you don't want to live anymore. Bruh, I wasn't going to use this clip either, but when I saw a thought in her head, I said, what the hell is this? Wait, wait, what the hell is this? So she must be having regrets about her thought activity, and it drove her into depression but this is the age we live in is sexually liberated and women are told to be sexually free in their youth and this is the result depression according to women their grandmothers and their mothers said don't worry about no man don't worry about being married young you do you and this is the results is driving women into depression just the freedom to think to be to choose to face life and the diversity of it and and be a person that is the major change i truly cannot catch a fucking break look at this if you if you're a lot luckier than i am let me explain to you that that is a critical engine fucking failure for the second time in the two and a half years that I've had this piece of shit Kia Soul. This is a brand new engine, maybe 30,000 miles on it, with the exact same defect as the last one. Last time they, this happened, they had to import the engine, and it took damn near two months for me to get my fucking car back. It wasn't as big of a deal then, because I had somewhere to live at the time. I do not know. I am in here. And... And if this happens again, if it takes them this long to replace the engine again, then that's it. That's it. I'm not, I can't work. So I'm not going to be able to keep up with my payments. I'm not going to be able to do anything. And I'm not going to be able to start over because losing this car is going to ruin my credit so fucking much that the only way that I'll be able to buy a car again is with cash, which is not an amount of money that I will ever be able to get because I can't work. I can't do this. I can't do this. <sighs> I just want to know what I did to deserve this life. Like, what God did I piss off? Seriously. Okay. I can't. I can't fucking do this anymore. Don't mind my hair. Okay, so if I don't find somewhere to live, I'm about to be homeless, right? I really don't have time. Like, no time at all. So my mom calls me, mom's like, Kila, you know you can come and live with me. I love you, mom, but I can't. Because, see, when you want to do something and you're so sure... And so spiritually guided you figure it out i'm not afraid of being homeless i've been homeless before see when you accept something less it's because you have a fear of doing something greater i'm not scared and i'm not afraid don't be afraid and you spend all of your time trying to be a man and a woman and this is the result <laughs> This was something straight out the horror flicks, at least by her screams. <laughs> a man in those situations would just think logically, call AAA, call a tow truck. I mean, her phone wasn't dead and it tripped me out how she just had to get that on camera. 
tire slips off the road and your first reaction is, I need to record this for TikTok. Even in the movies, men are expected to go into town and find help, but women don't see the importance of having a man. Yeah, okay. Do you think men are important? Like for what? <laughs> Are you totally free though up here? Are no, you? no. I wish I were. Just, but I'm not free. I, I, I'm all full of doubts. I hate going places alone. Still, I've reached this point in my life where the strong, independent woman phase is dying down, like slowly dying down. Like I'm tired. Okay. I've been going at it since I was 13 years old whether that's a, being a full-time employee, a student, or a stay-at-home mom of three kids who were all homeschooled. Me, I'm tired. And I've reached this point in my life where I have to really listen to myself. I have to listen to my body, and my mental health is more important than trying to do it all on my own. And it's, it's a lot, y'all. Like, trying to do this on your own is a lot, especially after going through a divorce and literally transitioning my life to being a single mom, it's a lot, okay? But I've reached this point in my life where I now have to start delegating things, okay? Get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else to clean my house weekly. Get somebody else to do my yard. Get somebody to do grocery shop for me. And I literally just don't have the time and the mental capacity anymore to continue trying to live about this image of being a strong independent woman. I'm not. I am a damsel in distress. I need help. Save me. Please. Everybody's always like, oh, I'm going to make it out the hood. I'm going to make it out the hood. You know who going to get me out the hood, bitch? Better wait. Because truly, deeply, if she don't get us out the hood, I don't know what it's going to give because... There's nothing up here. Nada. Zero. Zilch. Settle, nigga. <laughs>